In this lesson, we're gonna focus on the basic concept of binomial probability and then first, let's discuss the limitations to which we can consider a situation to be a binomial distribution. Now, a binomial distribution only counts two states typically represented as P for a success or Q for a failure given a number of trials in the data. So to easily remember this, try to remember the first three letters of binomial distribution. So we have BIN and so first, we have B which stands for binary outcomes. Now what this means is the event should only have two outcomes, whether success or failure. And then next, we must have independent trials. This is for letter I. Now what this means is the success or failure of one event must not affect the success or failure of any other event. And then finally, there must be a defined number of trials. And then for each trial, the probability of success must always be the same. And so consider this example of the probability of rolling a 1 twice in 4 trials. Now for this situation, we only have two outcomes. Either we roll a 1, which we'll consider as a successful outcome, or we roll a number other than 1, be it 2, 3, 4, and so on. Now this is for each of the trial. And then if we get 2, 3, 4, or any number other than 1, we will consider that as a failure. And then you also have independent trials as the events are not affected by the occurrence of any other events. For example, if you roll a die twice, the outcome of the first roll and the second roll have no effect on each other. As such, they are independent. And then in here, we also have a defined number of trials, which is, in this context, 4 trials. Now first, let's define the probability of rolling a 1. Now we know that a die has 6 sides. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6. And so for each trial, we actually have 6 outcomes. However, it is now reduced to 1 being a success and then getting another number to be a failure. And so for each trial, we have 6 outcomes. And so the probability of rolling a 1 will be 1 in 6 because we only have one possibility of getting a 1 and then we have 5 possibilities of getting any other number and so the probability of rolling a number other than 1 that will be 5 over 6 uh, let's just say the probability of rolling not 1 so this is 5 over 6 now this is what we will consider as success but this is what we will consider as failure because in the 4 trials we actually want to roll a 1 now for binomial distributions we actually have this formula the total probability is equal to n combination r multiplied by p to the power of r and then multiplied by q to the power of n minus r. Now n here is the number of trials and then r is the number of successes and then p is the probability of success while q is the probability of failure. These are our labels. However, in our problem here, let's first try to solve this manually. But first, let's define the probability of this particular situation to occur, rolling a 1 twice in 4 trials. Now recall that the probability of this particular situation to occur will be obtained by multiplying all the probabilities. Because recall that for independent events, we need to multiply all the probabilities to obtain the probability of the specific situation to happen. And so for two independent events, we have to multiply the probability of A and B. But for this situation, since we have 4 trials, then we actually need to multiply 4 events. And so let's say that in my first roll I got 1, and then in my second roll I got 4, and then in my third roll I got 1, and then in my fourth roll I get 3. So we now have this. Now recall that the probability of getting a 1 was 1 over 6, and then the probability of getting a number other than 1 is 5 over 6. Uh, by the way, this is 5 over 6 because we are not only counting getting a 4 because this may be 2, 3, 5, or 6 and then it will still be considered a failure. And so that's why we are counting this as 5 over 6. And then here, since we got a 1 in our third rule, then the probability of this happening is also 1 over 6. And then for the last one, we got a number other than 1. The probability of that happening is 5 over 6. And so for this specific situation to happen, wherein we'll get 1 in the first rule and also on the third rule, and then for the second rule and third rule, we got a number other than 1, we need to multiply all the probabilities. And so the probability of this happening, uh, this specific situation, this is 1 over 6 times 5 over 6 times 1 over 6 times 5 over 6. However, this doesn't account for the other situations in which we'll roll a 1 twice in 4 trials. 
because in actuality, it's possible that I can get one on the second trial and then on the third and fourth trial, I will get another number. And so if you will try to look at it, this particular equation actually defines this part of the equation. Now recall that P is the probability of success, which is in this case, 1 over 6. And then Q is the probability of failure, so this is 5 over 6. Uh, by the way, to get 5 over 6, you can just use 1 minus P. This is the probability of failure. Or intuitively, we have 5 possibilities of rolling a number other than 1. But for more complicated cases, it's helpful to use this formula. Now here, uh, R is the number of successes that we need. So since we want to roll a 1 twice, then our R will be 2. And so this expression, N minus R, will also be 2. Because our N is actually 4, since we have 4 trials. Again, n is the number of trials. And so this part of the equation will be, uh, let's substitute p. This is 1 over 6, and then to the power of r, which is 2. And then we have q, which is 5 over 6, raised to n minus r. So we have 4 minus 2. And so this becomes 2. So we now have 1 over 6 squared times 5 over 6 squared. And so notice that it's the same with this one. We have 1 over 6 squared and 5 over 6 squared. However, this part in the equation defines the number of possibilities that this particular situation will happen, uh, rolling a 1 twice. And so let's try to see the other situations wherein this will occur. So we can actually roll a 1 in our first and fourth trial. This one, uh, by the way, this is our first possibility. And then this is our second possibility. And then I can also roll a 1 in my second and fourth trial, which is this one. So this is our third possibility. And then we can also roll a 1 in our first and second trial. And then we can also roll a 1 in our last two trials, which is this condition. So this is our fifth possibility. And then you may also get 1 in your second and third roll, which is this possibility. And so since we don't have any more combinations, then we can say that the number of times that this particular situation will happen is 6. And so essentially, our probability will be we have 6 possibilities in which we can roll a 1 twice and then we'll multiply that by the individual independent probabilities. So we know that uh, for this particular situation, we have 1 over 6 squared multiplied by 5 over 6 squared because the probability of getting a number other than 1 is again 5 over 6, so this is 1 over 6, 1 over 6, and this is 5 over 6. This is the same for all situations, for us to rule a 1 twice in 4 trials. And so the total probability will be, let's just use our calculators, we have 6 times 1 over 6, and then squared, multiplied by 5 over 6, squared. And so this is 0 0.1157. So 0 0.1157, this is the total probability of rolling a 1 twice in 4 trials. This is how we will manually solve this type of problem. However, consider a situation wherein we have 8 trials or uh, let's say 10 or even more. Now notice that getting the number of times the particular situation will occur will be very tedious. And so that's why in here, to account for all the possibilities of the situation happening, we need to apply the combination function. Now this is our formula n factorial over n minus r factorial multiplied by r factorial. Now by the way, uh, to apply factorials, you will just multiply the numbers in a descending order until you reach 1. So let's say you have 6. This becomes 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 and then times 1. This is the process. However, thanks to calculators, we can just actually use the combination function. And so recall that earlier, we actually had 6 possibilities. Now to solve this using our calculator, uh, our number of trials was 4 and then the number of successes that we need was 2. So we have 2, uh, 4 combination 2. We must get 6. Uh, by the way, 6 is this value, the number of times the situation will occur. So we have 4 combination 2. Uh, by the way, to type this, press shift and then press the division symbol because we have here C. So again, 4C2. This gives us 6. And so for this case, we now have 8 trials and then we need to roll 1 twice. So our number of successes will still be 2. However, the number of possibilities will be larger. So press equals. We now have 28 possibilities. And so notice that if you will just solve it manually, then you will have to write all the combinations, which is very difficult. And so this is why we need this function. And so going back, let's try to solve this using the formula. We have 
Now, our n is 6, and then combination r, which is 2, times the probability of success, which is 1 over 6, to the power of 2, and then multiplied by the probability of failure, which is 5 over 6, to the power of n minus r, which is our number of trials is 4 minus 2. Uh, by the way, this is actually 4. So let me just write this down. This is, again, the number of trials equal to 4. This is the number of successes needed. This is the probability of success. And then this is the probability of failure. And so press equals, we can get the same value, 0.1157. And so this is how you can apply the formula of binomial distribution.